Okay, it is the day we have all been waiting for. I'm finally back running. I have like the biggest smile on my face. Can finally say I am actually a triathlete again. Yeah, so obviously even though I got the green light to start running, that doesn't mean I can just go and run continuously for hours on end. We've had to be really smart with the way that we build it up. Not because the hip injury necessarily is gonna come back, but because subsequent injuries could start happening if I went from zero to 100 with my running. So we've built it up really, really gradually by doing walk running to begin with. So that was like one minute of running, one minute of walking, doing that 10 times, having about a five minute walk and then doing the whole block again. Okay. <laughs> and from there, we just built that up super gradually. So they might have turned into two minute run blocks, three minute run blocks, keeping the amount of walking in between and just trying to build up what that overall run volume looked like on each session. Never doing runs back to back, always having a day rest just to see how the body reacted judge what muscles were tightening up and try and keep everything loose and functioning well. So we've been really, really smart to get to this point where I'm obviously back running. We haven't had any niggles or subsequent injuries, touch wood at this point. Everything seems to be going really well and in the right direction. I think we've obviously got Red Bull to thank massively for that because I'd already been building up all of the strength and resilience in the gym before we even got back to the point of running. So the muscles were prepared to run before I even started and then we were still super cautious in the way that we've been building it up. So we can already see that my running is completely different having done all of the strength work because I think that's been the most important thing is that for a while I've been able to see things that I'm doing in my running that aren't quite right. And yes, you can change the way you run by thinking about it, but I think the way to really cement that is by doing the gym work. Those really small stabilizing muscles that are the ones that are gonna prevent me from the little errors that I was making when I was running. The fact that we made them strong before I even came back running meant that as I started running again, my form was completely different. And yes, of course, I was thinking about it as well, but I didn't actually have to overthink it because the strength was already there, the movement patterns were already there, and it was just a case of just kind of having that back up in the back of your mind, okay, this is how I'm trying to run, but actually I am not having to overthink it because the muscles already kind of know what they need to do. So really there is no negative side to doing those exercises. There's not really gonna come a point where I would stop. Like, yes, if I had a couple of weeks 
not doing them, I shouldn't massively revert, but I will start to revert on that technique. So it's really important to just keep those small muscles strong, particularly the ones where we saw a weakness in the beginning and that was the fundamental problem with my biomechanics was because those muscles weren't quite strong enough and they were almost reinforcing the bad habits that I had when I was running. So I don't think I will ever stop doing them completely. I'll use them as part of run warm-ups, as daily mobility work. All of those things are just gonna have to come as part of my program week by week because obviously I can't afford to let those things get weak again, let my form deteriorate and let these niggles and injuries start to creep back in again because that's definitely not what I want. Oh, we are parked up at just outside. We are a few minutes early, but ready whenever you are. <laughs> Should I go and get him with you? <laughs> we knew that we wanted to explore the whole range of the ASIC shoes. So I actually reached out to them and said, I would love to find out what shoes are gonna work best for some of my different run sessions. One of the potential mistakes that I made last year was that I probably did 85% or more of my running in their race shoe. So if I wanted to do fast intervals, I always went to the Metaspeed Sky or the Metaspeed Edge. I would do my long steady miles in a more supportive shoe, but I never really felt like that was the best one for me. So I reached out to ASICS and they said, you know what, we can come to you, we can come with the entire range of shoes, we can look at the way that it makes you run, and we can decide which ones are gonna work best. Also, I wanted to look at how I ran in the race shoe, just to get an idea of how things are improving, because actually a lot of the old footage we had was from me doing key run sessions in the Metaspeed Sky and race footage. So we already could see the errors that I was making in those shoes last year. So it was a really interesting day. I definitely felt like a kid in a sweet shop. All these colourful and bright different shoes. Just to try, we'll get to go through them, see how they feel. On um, Ultimately it's down to how they feel, but we'll also have a look at the gait yeah. assessment. Okay, yeah. Just get into yeah. a comfortable uh, pace, stay that for about a minute or so, okay. and then what I'll do is I'll do a recording. So this yeah. is really good. What it does is it analyzes your gait pattern, like yeah. everything that sends it into yeah. the cloud, analyzes it against 10 to 15,000 yeah, cool. different other gait patterns, yeah. and we'll bring back a result. Obviously, I'll do a visual examination as well as yeah. you and we'll take a look. We'll have a look at the results, and based off this, we'll just see, like I say, what sits well on the foot cool. and what holds uh, your foot best as it's going through the gait cycle. Okay. Not too bad, more mid foot. We yeah. see there's still that little bit of a roll within it. Yeah. How do they feel the medium? Yeah, they're definitely holding my feet. They've got good, you can feel that. Good support. support. You're not benefiting from the support in the heel of the Keanu because you land okay. more midfoot. As you go into the longer distances, you the drop fatigue back. will come the in. The fatigue will come in and you drop back. Is a little bit more, Slightly more, yes. more. The foot is straight, which is is good. We're not seeing, you know, it splaying out. We would see a more aggressive pronation there. In terms of the angle and the degree that you're you're over pronating, round probably six degrees. Okay, yeah. Now everyone has a different perception of, of what over pronation is, and yeah. we've come to a conclusion that it is around sort of three to nine. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, so there is a little bit of of light to, to moderate pronation but okay, it's yeah. not as I say excessive. Yeah. Doing about five minutes running in each shoe, getting a recording, looking at how my feet are either pronating or the way that they're landing, looking at the way that my kind of knee to ankle and that part of my leg, whether it rotates or rolls in or anything weird is happening. So it was really interesting to see that and then obviously get to our final outcome 
of shoes that are going to work for me. but not quite as clunky as these ones, so they're yeah. a little bit lighter. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I wasn't pronating as much, yeah. and it was quite good, so I've gone with the most dull colour. <laughs> <laughs> <which is, laughs> but they definitely feel um, okay. the best. So, looking at the different shoes, I did loads of different runs in different shoes, but the ones that we've decided that work best for me at the current kind of point of where I am with my running are the Gel Kano Light. These just were super supportive, they're quite a wide base on them so it gave me a nice sturdy kind of landing position. It made me not pronate too much, there was still a very small amount but pretty much was able to keep that nice ankle straight alignment in there but these just felt super comfortable really supportive and allowed me to run kind of with really good form so for doing my long miles more so on the road these will work really well but there's no reason why they won't work off road as well on the trails that i run on so super happy with those the gel kano light twos for a pretty supportive shoe they are really, really light, which I guess the clue's in the name. But apparently uh, the light also means that they are quite sustainable, so they have a low impact, carbon impact on the world. I believe that's what they said as well. So yeah, I feel quite nice running in these for my long miles. You're coming through and landing. We've got that nice straight line. Cool. And then as we come in, we see a little bit of a deviation or a dipping within that. Yeah. Um, but it, that is more of what we class as natural pronation. And okay, yeah. As you, as you probably aware, we all have that little bit of natural pronation anyway, which is yeah. the way our body naturally absorbs shock through the gait cycle. As we come into the right, again, that that's pretty much neutral with a very, very, very slight, yeah, slight dip. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it sits really well. That left foot, as we know, is always going to have that little bit more pronation. Yeah. Um, but I think overall, it, it looks really good. So we also have got, these are called the Gel DS Trainer, or just the DS. These are going to be for my faster interval training. So they are not a carbon shoe. They are a very neutral shoe. They've got good grip on them for like running on the track or trying to get up to speed. You've got good traction there. They still felt nice and supportive, but obviously they're super light. They allowed me to kind of run four foot onto my toe. But yeah, they just felt really nice. And again, I wasn't pronating too much in them. So these will be what I'll probably do like track intervals in, road intervals, any higher intensity running, probably even on the treadmill. We'll whack these on because it looked good and it felt good, which I guess is the main thing. pretty much straight all the way through the gait cycle cool. which is really good uh the right sorry there is still a fractional Slight, yeah. roll that is the ds trainer that you've just been in and that's the keanu okay yeah so it's slightly so it's, less than this one yeah, yeah. In, in your left foot it's actually supporting it better 
Yeah. In the right foot, it's probably there or thereabouts the same. Probably looking at about a degree difference okay, between yeah. the two. We've got the Nova Blast 2s. I've pretty much been doing all of my running as I've come back from um, injury in the Nova Blast and they just feel nice and supportive. Obviously they've got a huge cushion in at the back. Where I'm landing more mid to forefoot isn't really essential but they do just feel really nice and they're another good variation for me. So rather than always running in the same shoe and my foot getting used to that, I think it's good to have a bit of variation just to make sure that you keep kind of testing that foot and making sure that it can get strong. So having a mix of shoes to rotate isn't necessarily a problem. So yeah, I like the Nova Blast. I think they're gonna be another good addition. Obviously, I'm going to be racing in the Metaspeed Sky Plus, which I actually did my first run in them today. And you can see from the smile on my face that it felt good to put a carbon shoe on and actually run fast because it's been so long since I've done any fast running. <laughs> Reminds me of like when you used to put your race suit on in swimming and then you'd just be like yeah. <laughs> It was only a couple of minutes but it's just nice to know that when I put those shoes on I'm going to be able to run quick but I think I'm going to limit how much running I actually do in them. It'll just be like my top end sessions. Uh, if I go and do a park run I'll probably put them on or if I'm going to do any road racing I'll put them on but mostly will just be for my actual racing in triathlon. Hopefully I can report the strength work that I'm doing, we can already see that it's really paying off. There's still work to be had, but everything is going really in the right direction now. Massively since last year and how I would run in that shoe. Depending on the type of runner you are, it will depend on what shoe works for you. So Reese and myself are very different runners. I have now developed a more mid to four foot running style. Reese has always been a very four foot runner. So that can impact the type of shoe that would work for you as an individual. So this is why doing a running analysis, looking at different shoes, is actually really important, not just for an elite athlete, but if you get the opportunity to do it as an amateur athlete, it can obviously save you a lot of time and energy around injuries and things like that if you're in the right shoe it's one of the most crucial things now there's different types of shoes for a more neutral landing runner someone who lands more on the outside of their foot someone who lands more on the inside it really will depend a lot on the type of runner where you need the support to put it really simply for your long steady miles any runner is probably going to be better and a bit more of a supportive shoe one that helps promote good running techniques so one that doesn't let your foot roll around it makes you land quite nice and neutral actually you don't need to be a neutral foot runner to be a good runner you can land on the edge of your foot on the front of your foot but it is really about what that ankle is doing in my case so if my ankle's rolling in causing my foot to roll in causing my knee to roll in and my hip then we have a problem so for your faster runs no matter what level of athlete you are if you want to actually run a bit faster then a super super supportive more heavy shoe isn't going to work for you you do want something a little bit lighter gives you just enough support but allows you to kind of put in some solid work We also were really fortunate to go and do another running analysis, which was similar to 
when I went to Red Bull and they put the sensors on me. Obviously at the time then I could only walk, this time I was able to run. So we knew what shoes worked for me, so I took the Keanu lights, the Nova Blast 2s, and I took the Metaspeed Sky Pluses with me. So we was able to look at the way that I'm running in those three shoes, and already from that run analysis, which was from a guy called Ken from Run3D. Now Ken actually does some triathlon himself. He had actually met Reese and myself at Outlaw Holcomb last year, and said if we ever did want to go and do a run analysis, he would be really happy to assist with that. The issues that we had before when my feet were rolling in, causing my knee and hip to twist in, have massively reduced. The way that I'm landing on my feet has changed, so I was having some issues with my left foot. Now that is resolved, I'm more of a mid to four foot runner, so everything does look more efficient. There's still more progress to be had, hence why I need to continue doing the strength work that I'm doing around my hips and my glutes and my feet and my ankles, but everything is going in the right direction, so really super positive to see. We will probably retest in the future again, just to check that one, I haven't lapsed on the strength work and things have gone backwards, but we would hope if I continue to do the work, things will just progress and be even better. So that was really great to just confirm that everything is going in the right direction. Two kilos. So of all the three disciplines, running has been the absolute hardest one to get back into. I guess cycling, whilst it is the one that I'm newest to, it's not a hugely technical driven sport. So you can get on a bike, especially a turbo, and just ride it, it feels okay. But actually running is a lot more of a technical sport. I've obviously completely changed my running style from the work that I've done. So I feel like it was always gonna feel quite alien coming back, but it definitely feels really tough coming back. The heart rate's way higher than it was before. I've obviously had months away from running. I've gained some muscle mass, but also some non-muscle mass weight. So I'm having to run around carrying more weight than I was before. So all of that will have an impact, but definitely the technique is better. So I'm very positive that once the fitness starts to come back on running, I will be a more efficient runner and therefore the theory is I should actually be a faster runner. So like with this whole injury, patience has been the key. I feel like I've got really good at that throughout this injury that I'm not gonna rush anything. So I'm not wanting to go zero to 100 with my running. I'm just gonna build it up super gradually, rely a bit on my fitness from the swim and bike that I've been building up to hopefully carry my running and allow me to get some running fitness back fairly quickly, even though I'm gonna be patient with the way that I build it up. So, thanks for watching this video. I'm so happy to report that I'm back running and that gives a bit of an insight around how things are progressing and how I'm building up that running nice and gradually. As always, thanks for watching this video and make sure to like and subscribe for future videos. This is how I'm trying to run. She just literally nearly fell off of there. <laughs> um, yeah.